Sucks here to play. Mini Wargaming's Chaos Tactics. Mini Wargamer Dave here from MiniWargaming.com. Welcome, Wargamers, back to this Blood Angel HQ series of tactics, where I'm going to scrutinize each one as I see fit, because they, there's about time they, they've been scrutinized like this. They, they like it. They like being tickled on the back. Let's just talk about the Sanguinor. That's what we're going to talk about in this video. The Sanguinor, the golden angel of vengeance. Doesn't that look scary? Can you imagine him flying down from the sky and busting stuff up? Most expensive HQ in the Blood Angel army, 275 points. I mean, that's huge. Can you imagine bringing him in a thousand point game? That would just be stupid. Lee, awesome for you. Let's talk about his war gear. It's pretty simple. He's got artificer armor, two plus save. It's not terminator armor, it's different. Frag and crack grenades. He's got a jump pack, which is actually those wings. They just don't want to call it wings because that doesn't make sense. He's got jump pack, although chaos have wings, but you have to upgrade them with them. He automatically has wings, but they're called a jump pack. It acts like a jump pack. The fact of the matter is he's able to move 12 inches in any direction he likes and he doesn't have to make some sort of psychic test to do it. He just does it automatically. He's got a glaive and carmine. I held it like a sword. I don't even know if it's a sword. I think it's like a fist. That's a two-handed master crafted power weapon. And yet he only holds it with one hand. Special rules, he's got Descent of Angels. That's if you choose to deep strike him. It makes it so it's much better and you don't scatter as far and you get to re-roll if you fail it. Personally, I wouldn't deep strike him because you may not get him onto the field until many rounds later. And that's just a total waste for 275 points. You're gonna want him on the battlefield from the beginning. I have never once fielded him and deep striked him in. That is a waste of good cheese. He is an eternal warrior. So good luck instant killing him. It just won't happen ever. He's kind of resilient like that. He's also fearless. He takes extra wounds if he loses combat. That's if he loses combat. He's probably not gonna lose combat if he's in combat. He's got furious charge. I mean, what does he need furious charge for? He's already strength five. And his initiative is six. Like, unless you're fighting Eldar, what do you need that high of initiative for? But he's got it nonetheless. Now let's talk about some of his specific rules. Yeah, I'm going through all the lists of anything that you can just read in the codex, but we're gonna get to his playability in a little bit. He is the Avenging Angel. As soon as he enters the game and placed on the board, he is able to point at one of the enemy HQs and he is able to reroll all his failed rolls to hit into wound against him. Essentially, it's like transfixing gaze, only the enemy doesn't get a choice in it at all. The other one, he can actually make his leadership roll, but this one, there's no leadership, he just automatically does it. Kind of makes sense though. I mean, if he's flying around in the sky and then he just like drops and does the avenging angel on him, no one can stop that, right? Whereas if it's a gaze, you can just close your eyes. Maybe you won't be gazed upon. It's kind of harder to dodge an avenging angel flying down from the sky and swooping your face off. He also has the Sanguinor's Blessing. So you choose one of your captains, just randomly, and then you give him plus one to weapon skill, wound, initiative, attack, for the remainder of the whole battle. So that's pretty useful if you have units such as Assault Marines, where you know they're going to want to uh, be attacking in close combat. He's got a will that is unyielding. That basically means he's got a three plus invulnerable save. And let's not forget his aura of fervor. So that basically means that any friendly unit within six inches of him get plus one attack. Except for him, he doesn't get it, give it to himself, he just gives it to others. Okay, now for his uses on the battlefield. Rule number one with the Sanguinor, never deep strike him, ever. I know I said this before, but I have to reinforce this, because some people might be tempted, the fact that he's got wings and he's got Descent of Angels. Just don't do it. Why would you risk him being locked away for half the game, and then him being shot up when he enters the battlefield and possibly killed? He's only got three wounds, and his toughness is only four, so it's not that hard to wound him. He's not as gonna say durable, but that's not the word. Hardy is the word. He's a little less hardy than Mephiston, so he's a little bit easier to kill. Another good thing to do is also field a sanguinary priest close by to give him feel no pain. Yes, he already has Furious Charge, so that doesn't matter, but it's the feel no pain aspect. You want to get as many rolls saving his life as possible because he's only got three wounds. A very good tactic with the Sanguinor is to field him close to other assault type units, i.e. assault marines, so that you give them all their plus one attack. Make sure they're within six inches of him, then there's just a stupid amount of attacks. If it's an assault marine, that gives them four attacks on the charge. It's as if it's a corn berserker. Yes, I revert back to chaos because chaos is my life and I love chaos. And this is my secret. I am trying to make the blood angels chaos. In case you couldn't tell that, that's just what I'm trying to do. 
Now it's out in the open, there's no stopping it. For the Sanguinor, I say the same thing that I said for Mephiston. Be careful with him, protect him as much as possible in the beginning so that he doesn't get killed. For him, you'll have to do this even more so because he doesn't have those extra wounds and he's not as tough. So he's going to really need that extra cover, sometimes even zero line of sight so that stuff can't fire at him using your uh, tanks, or some people call them coffins. I don't think they're coffins though, especially if you got 12 on the board, like that's just fun. I would never field him and another expensive HQ in the same game, even if it was a game that had a lot of points at my disposal. It's just because they're so expensive. And if they die, so much of your army is just chunked out just from one guy dying. It's not really that good. I have found that the Sanguinor doesn't get his points back in killing the enemy units that he needs to. Because let's face it, it's 275 points. You're gonna have to kill a whole lot. He's really good for themed armies if you want to be all assaulty and jumping around and stuff. People like that. They like being symmetrical in OCD about their uh, game playing. I know, I am, I, I like that. I like bringing things in pairs as opposed to just bringing one of something. But you can only bring one of him because he's unique. You can't bring two Sanguinors, so it just doesn't make sense. Something that is really good for is scare tactics because people, they don't really know his abilities offhand and if they do, they know that he's pretty strong. So it's good to scare your opponent into submission. That's the Leonidas coming out. The Sanguinor is going to be your HQ killer. Focus on the enemy HQ with the Sanguinor. That's his strength. He's got weapon skill eight. That's just stupid. Especially since he's gonna be re-rolling those rolls anyway because of his Avenging Angel ability and his Furious Charge. Chances are you're gonna get the charge because you got wings. Focus on the enemy HQ. That's what you need to do with the Sanguinor. Fielding him from turn one on the table. And when you bring him up, bring up a squad of Assault Marines with him. Doing that is pretty much the same as having about three more guys in the squad, right? Three attacks each on the charge. Heck, if that's the case, it's the same as having five more guys. That's if you bring a squad up with you. The most important thing with him is uh, line of sight negating. Because if it can't shoot you, it can't shoot you, right? But if it can shoot you, it doesn't matter if there is a unit in front of you, because that would only give you a four plus cover. But he's got a three plus invulnerable, so that doesn't even matter. Don't worry about throwing him up there, thinking that weapons can actually hurt you effectively. If you have killed the enemy HQ with the Sanguinor, he has done his job. It doesn't matter if he lives or dies after that. Even if you get killed and you don't make up your points cost. Because let's face it, if you're bringing the Sanguinor into a game, that's not the purpose of that. You're not trying to get your points back with him because it's gonna be really rare that it does happen. The time that it does happen is when you slaughter your enemy. But the important thing is taking out the enemy HQ. If I were to rate him out of 10, I would give him an eight. Field him, have fun. He will make you happy. And he'll maybe bring you up in the sky and make it so you can see the earth from his vision and he sees a lot, you know? He's pretty wise, so he can teach you stuff, like how not to fall when you're flying. Thank you very much for watching this video on the Sanguinor. Click here if you wanna watch the video on Astarath the Grim, who thinks he's the Grim Reaper, but he's really not. He's probably like his brother who failed at the job, so it was given to Reaper and not Astarath. Anyway, if you're on YouTube, click here. If you're on miniwargaming.com, click on part three below to watch that video. It's kind of scary looking.